Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. And before we get started with today's video, I would like to point out that I'm actually recording this video with my brand new phone that I got today. It's the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the one with the pen. Um, this one, this is actually a phone I just got today. And um, yeah, this is actually my first video recording with it. And I think it's got a different resolution than the uh, other phone I had. Well, uh, that's not really the point of this video, of course. So anyways, today's video for you guys is another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. And today I'm going to be talking about four movies this time around. Today I'm going to be talking about the Indiana Jones movies. The first four Indiana Jones movies, of course. Because there's a new one coming out, The Dial of Destiny, which comes out at the end of next month. So in honor of that, I've decided to I'm going to be reviewing the first four movies today, which consist of Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and Indiana Jones, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So let's not waste any more time and uh, let's talk about them. So we're starting with the first film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was directed by Steven Spielberg and was co-written by George Lucas, who was the creator of Star Wars, of course. And this film was originally released on June 12th, 1981. And um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add, so let's talk about the story of the film and then we'll get my thoughts on it. So... Let's dive into Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, Raiders of the Lost Ark takes place in the year 1936 and follows an archaeologist and adventurer named Indiana Jones, who is played by Harrison Ford. And uh, Indiana Jones has been hired by a museum courier named, named uh, Marcus, who's uh, tasked Indiana Jones with finding a biblical artifact known as the Ark of the, Co Ark of the Covenant which is said to have the key to human life. And with the help of a friend named Marion and some other allies, Indiana Jones seeks out to find the, the uh, Ark in Egypt. While along the way, he's trying to stop his rival, Rene Bellacqua, and the Nazis from trying to find the Ark before he does, before they can control the power, I mean, human power. And without giving away too much, that's basically the storyline of the film in a nutshell. Now, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a classic film. What can you say? It's so iconic. The rolling boulder scene around the beginning is iconic. The music is iconic, including the themes. Well, the, the theme song is iconic, too. Although I can't play it in the video because of copyright reasons, but I'm sure you know what the theme song is. And, um, and the character Indiana Jones is so iconic. Like, one of the most iconic characters in pop culture in the 80s and um it's just a really well made film for the time great set designs some great some pretty good cinematography the action sequences are awesome and impressive for its time being and it has some really good special effects too for its time it's really interesting including some special effects towards the end of the film which i don't want to spoil it that make it feel like something out of an early cronenberg movie but it's a timeless classic, what can you say? Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's an awesome film. I remember watching it for the first time as a kid. I think I was like seven years old when I first watched it. But I was completely blown away by it when I first watched it. Even watching it as an adult, I really, really enjoyed watching it. And uh, it never gets old. How can you go wrong with uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? It's a classic film. And um, before we continue any further, I just want to point out that this movie and two other films in the series I've watched as a kid, but one of them that we'll get to in a minute, I haven't seen until as an adult. Like, I haven't seen until as of very recently. Just wanted to point that out. But I don't really have a whole lot to say about Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's a timeless classic. What can you say? It's just, it's an awesome movie. And all these years later, it's still an awesome movie. Almost 42 years later. But if you haven't seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, definitely check it out. So I'm giving Raiders of the Lost Ark an 8.6 out of 10. Now we move on to the sequel. Well, it's more of a prequel, rather. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which was, again, directed by Steven Spielberg and was released on May 23rd, 1984. Now, early, now a minute ago, I said that there were three of these movies in the series that I've watched as a kid, but one of them I've never watched until very recently. Well, this was the one I've never seen before. I've never seen Temple of Doom 
But I've seen all the other ones except for this one. I never watched it as a kid. I don't know why it took me so long to watch it, but I finally watched it very recently. Well, we'll get to that more of that in a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's not waste any more time, and let's take a dive into Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So, Temple of Doom takes place one year before the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's 1935, and the film starts off in Hong Kong, where Indiana Jones, along with a woman named Willie, played by Kate Capshaw, and a 12-year-old boy named Short Round, played by Ki Huai Kwan, who you might know from the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And, um, anyways, so Indiana Jones, Willie, and Short Round escape from Hong Kong after being chased by some Hong Kong mobsters who wanted them dead. And they get on a flight to escape. However, the two pilots of the airplane ditch them out of the plane. And, um,. They, uh, the plane then crashes into near a remote village somewhere in India after uh, Indiana Jones, Willie, and Short Round survive the uh, crash. They, uh, they go to a nearby village and the people in the village ask uh, Indiana Jones, Short Round, and Willie to help recover the three magical stones that, uh, that were stolen from their village that made the village rich but the village is poor since the st the stones were stolen by a cult leader named Mullah Ram so Indiana Jones agrees to do it and Short Round agrees to do it but Willie not so much but she d still does it anyways they decided to help out with the village and recover the magical stones from the evil Mullah Ram and his cult who sacrificed people and much like the first film only they're not against any Nazis, they're against an entire cult. There's danger, there's traps, and there's death that awaits them. And can they overcome it? Well, without giving away too much, that's the storyline of the film in a nutshell. The funny thing is, before I watched this movie, I kind of knew how the story was going to go because I actually rem remember playing Lego Indiana Jones, the original Adventures on the Nintendo Wii. So I kind of rem remembered how the story goes even though in that game they spoof out a lot of the stuff from the movies <laughs> but yeah I kind of uh I kind of have a little bit of nostalgia with that game but anyways after years of never seeing uh Temple of Doom I finally watched it last week yeah it was last week and I can honestly say it's not as good as as Raiders of the Lost Ark but it is a fun movie to watch it has a lot of fun moments in it got some great set designs some cool special effects and um, the action sequences are awesome much like the first film and uh, it's really entertaining but it's not as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark in my opinion but it's still a really fun movie to watch but damn I can't believe it took me so long to watch it I've watched the other movies when I was a little kid but it took me so long to watch it as a 21 year old man and I finally watched it, so I've officially watched all the Indiana Jones movies, except for The Dial of Destiny, of course, which comes out at the end of next month. So, uh, once again, Temple of Doom is not as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it's still a really fun movie to watch. I had fun watching it. But I do recommend it if you like the first film. But, again, not as good as Raiders of the Lost Ark, but still a really fun movie to watch. So I don't have anything else to add, so... Um, I'm just going to give Temple of Doom a 7.8 out of 10. Now we move on to the third film, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which again was directed by Steven Spielberg and was originally released on May 24th, 1989. Now this film was actually the first one in the series I ever watched. I remember renting it from Roger's video as a kid when I was like 7 years old, I believe. And uh, I know I watched them in the wrong order as a kid. I watched uh, this one first, then Raiders of the Lost Ark, then Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and then most recently, Temple of Doom. Yeah, I watched the whole series in a completely screwed up order. <laughs> I kind of regret it, but hey, I was only seven years old then. And I probably shouldn't have been watching these movies as a little kid, but eh, they were PG and PG-13 movies anyways they weren't r-rated or anything my parents wouldn't let me watch anything r-rated as a kid of course 
So, uh, yeah, let's not waste any more time, and uh, let's talk about The Last Crusade. Now, The Last Crusade takes place two years after the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1938, but at the beginning of the film, it starts off in 1912, where it features a young Indiana Jones, who was played by the late River Phoenix. Rest in peace, by the way. And um, it shows off uh, the young Indiana Jones um, again getting chased by a group of men after he uh, took a... Um, I forgot what the thing was called. It was like a... Uh, it was like a cross or something. It was like a treasure or something. I can't really remember what it was exactly. But anyways, at the beginning of the film, he's getting chased by the two, by a group of men who were trying to get it back from Indiana Jones, and they were chasing him on a train. Then he runs back to his father, played by the late Sean Connery. And then the film flash forwards to 1938, and uh, Indiana Jones is uh, assigned to help find another religious artifact, this time the the holy grail which was uh said to have been present at the, the the last supper which if you're a religious person you might be familiar with the whole uh, the last supper thingy but along the way indiana jones finds out his father is kidnapped by the nazis and he's trying to save him from from the nazis after getting betrayed by someone who he trusted, who turned out to be a Nazi spy, it's up to uh, Indiana Jones and his father, and along with some allies, to find the Holy Grail before the Nazis do. And uh, without giving away too much, that's the storyline of the film. And uh, Now I must say, I can't decide if I either like this film or Raiders of the Lost Ark the best. They're both equally amazing films, and they're just fun to watch movies, but I can't decide. But uh, this was a really, really fun one to watch. There's some great action, much like the previous two films. And the music is awesome. And the whole set designs and the different parts of the world they travel are really cool. And uh, there's even, the, I especially like the fight scene in the tank around, around the end of the movie. And it's got some comedic elements, especially the part where they're in Berlin when they're burning books. They were trying to retrie retrieve uh, Indiana Jones's father's uh, journal that was stolen. And when they were about to leave the area, they were uh, stumbled a, cr a crowd of people who were wailing to get an autograph from Adolf Hitler, which, of course, this movie takes place before World War II, of course. And they accidentally get their... They accidentally get the journal signed by Hitler, which I thought was really funny. But, yeah, that part was funny. But, uh, yeah, again... I can't decide if this one is my favorite or the first one's my favorite. They're both really, really fun movies, and they're both equally entertaining. But I don't know. They're they're just both they're just both awesome movies. And Sean Connery was a was great in this movie too. May he rest in peace. Same with uh, River Phoenix, who was only in the movie for the first for the first little bit, like at the very beginning of the film, and that was it in the flashback. He was good in it too. It's too bad. It's gonna be. It's too bad. It's been almost thirty years since uh, he passed away. But I don't really have a whole lot to say about Ra uh, the Last Crusade, other than this one might be my favorite, or Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, Last Crusade, awesome movie, and I think they should have stopped after the Last Crusade. But hey, that's just me. So anyways, I'm giving Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade an 8.6 out of 10. I, the same rating I gave Raiders of the Lost Ark. And last but not least, Indiana Jones, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The fourth and for a long time, the last film in the series until The Dial of Destiny comes out, of course. And again, this film was directed by Steven Spielberg and it was originally released on May 22nd, 2008. So as of this video, this movie is still 14 years old. But not next week, but the week after, the movie will be 15 years old. And damn, I sound old. I remember when this movie was coming out back in the day. I, there was I saw a lot of commercials for it when it was coming out. And I had some of the Lego sets as a kid. And I remember remember playing Lego, India, Lego Indiana Jones on the Nintendo Wii, like I said earlier in the video. And one of my best friends growing up, was a was obsessed with Indiana Jones at the time when this movie was coming out. 
Now, I watched this movie once as a kid a long time ago, and I remember liking it. And I revisited the film recently to see if it still holds up, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Now, I know this movie is considered the weakest film in the series with on IMDb with a rating of 6.2 out of 10 star rating. And, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, anyways, let's take a look into the storyline of the film, and then we'll give, we'll dive into my opinions on the film. So, let's take a dive into Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull takes place 19 years after the events of the Last Crusade in 1957. So, there's no Nazis in this film this time, of course. This time, it's the Soviet Union. So the film starts off where Indiana Jones is kidnapped by a group of Soviet soldiers and taken to Area 51 after uh, the security at Area 51 has been taken out by Soviet Union soldiers posing as Americans. And the Soviets are led by a woman named Irina Spalko, played by Kate Blanchett, who was a good choice in casting as the villain for this film. So, after Indiana Jones escapes from the Soviets, he's uh, being, uh, kind of being, he's being kept an eye on by the feds, because back in the 50s, you know, um, if you know what the history was like in America back in the 50s, when people were suspected of being spies for the Soviet Union, you know how they were treated back then. So, Indiana Jones has been kicked out of his job as being a professor at a university, so he ha he's unemployed and kind of wanted by the feds for being suspected of assisting the Soviets of taking over Area 51. But he's trying to prove his innocence, of course. But along the way, he's on his way to Peru to, to return a an artifact known as the Crystal Skull to a temple where it was stolen from centuries ago. And while on the way, he comes across a new ally named Mutt Williams, played by Shia LaBeouf. And this film also has the return of Marion, played by uh, Karen Allen from the first film. She returns in this film. So, while Indiana Jones is trying to return the Crystal Skull, because the Crystal Skull said to whoever returns it gets the power from the skull. So, of course, they're trying to avoid the Soviet Union, who are trying to get to get the crystal skull and return it so they can get all the power in the world and without giving away too much that's the storyline of the film in a nutshell now i'll admit i like this movie as a kid i thought it was a fun movie to watch as a kid i didn't really see anything wrong with it because i was a little kid and didn't really have an understanding of how movies worked well other than uh practical effects though of course but i didn't really pay attention to any of that stuff when i was a kid but uh, re-watching it as an adult, I can definitely see the flaws with this movie. And I can tell you, this movie is not as good as I remember it as a kid. And it definitely hasn't really aged well. Now, the movie is not terrible by any means. It has its moments. But it is definitely the weakest film in the franchise. The problems with this movie are is that the writing isn't really strong enough. The story is decent, but it's not as strong as the previous three films on top of that the cgi like there is a lot of cgi in this movie which is well it's kind of hard to believe that there was so much cgi in this movie considering the original three had a lot of practical effects for its time but then they just moved on to cgi and this a lot of the cgi looks bad and I actually, when I watched this movie recently, I watched it on 4K because I own all four of these movies on 4K Blu-ray. And I can tell you, the CGI has not aged well at all. And some of the CGI looks a little worse in 4K. Although it's not the worst CGI I've seen, but the CGI is bad. A lot of the, sc the script is pretty weak and some of the dialogue is pretty cheesy. Especially for uh, Shia LaBeouf's character. Although he was alright in this movie. Some of the performances in this movie were pretty good, and I thought Kate Blanchett was a great choice as the villain of the film. But um, it's not a terrible movie, but it was alright. It had its moments. But I can definitely tell you this movie hasn't aged well. But again, I liked it as a kid, but watching it as an adult, I can definitely see the flaws with this movie. But 
it's not a terrible movie. It does have its moments, and there are some stuff I like about it. I love the the, the nuke town scene, where uh, Indiana Jones goes into the into the goes into the fridge to survive a nuclear explosion from a a test site where it has all the dummies and stuff. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It kind of reminds me of that map from the first Black Ops game, Nuke Town, like with all the dummies and stuff. It reminds me of that. And I like how they brought um how they brought um Marion back from the first film and I thought Kate Blanchett was a good choice as the villain. But and the action sequences were pretty good too despite a lot of the CGI not looking very good. However, those are the only positives I have with this movie. But at the end of the day, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is not a terrible movie. It has its moments in there. It can be entertaining at times. However, it is the weakest film in this franchise and probably my least favorite film in the series. But again, it's not a terrible movie. It's definitely the weakest film in the franchise. Um, it is nowhere near as good as the first three. I prefer the first three films over this one. But once again, it's an alright movie. It has its moments, but yeah, it definitely hasn't really aged well. And uh, let's one can hope can s and see if Dial of Destiny will be better. But one thing is certain, nothing will ever beat the first three Indiana Jones movies. So I don't have anything else to add. So I'm giving Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull a 6.5 out of 10. So that wraps up my review of the first four Indiana Jones movies. And I do plan on seeing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny when, when it comes out. I actually might go see it on my birthday because the movie comes out on June 30th and my 22nd birthday is on July 3rd. Now I'm not sure if I'll see it on my birthday for sure or not, but it could be a possibility. However, for sure I do plan on seeing uh, Dial of Destiny and I will definitely do a review of it once I see it. And I was actually thinking about reviewing all four of these movies along with uh, Dial of Destiny, but eh, I decided to review them early. And then I'll talk about Dial of Destiny once I see it. So, uh, yeah, guys. So, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications. Share the video with your friends, family, and whoever. And follow me on my other social media. The links are in the description down below. And what's your favorite movie in the, in the Indiana Jones franchise? Let me know in the comment section below. And, uh, yeah, guys, so until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out.